Uh, yeah, this is Lu my name is Lewis Cole, and these are some records in my life. so much for being on Records of My Life. How are you today? Good. How are you? Good, good, thank you. How's uh, boys been treating you? Uh, this green room's pretty good. <laughs> this is really all I have to base it on. The sound check was nice. Your record just dropped in the last couple of months, Quality Over Opinion. Congratulations on that. And Thanks. Great title, too. I love it. And, and sincerity. Um, can you tell us a bit where you about the record, where you recorded it, uh, who, yeah. you, who you made it with, uh, collaborators, all that jazz? Yeah. I mean, I mostly made it myself, just at my house, in my bedroom or my garage. Garage is where I record my drums or my vocals, and then bedroom, which is just my space, my room, so I, I like writing in there. There are some features on the album, but I wrote everything on it. Mostly recorded it myself unless it's like, you know, there's um, there's a saxophone sa solo from Sam Gendel and uh, Chris Fishman on piano, Nate Wood on bass, Marlon Mackey on vocals, Genevieve Artadi on vocals, uh, Kurt Rosenwinkel on guitar. Did I forget anyone? No. <laughs> <Cool>. <laughs> <laughs> Usually Daniel knows. That's great. <laughs> I've, pr I've read the records inspired by Miles Davis, Meshuga, uh, yeah. Mahler. Can you give us a couple of favorite records from those artists? Yeah, um, the Mahler record called uh, Ballads and Blues. <laughs> no, I'm just kidding. Uh, I don't know. There's, there's a few. <laughs> there's a few Mahler, uh, a few Mahler tracks that are pretty sick. Uh, obviously, one of the I think one of the just best pieces of music written of all time um, is the fourth movement of Mahler's Fifth Symphony. Uh, just a, the slow piece with mostly strings and I think harp. I don't think I've written anything really that sounds like that necessarily, but just knowing that that exists kind of makes me want to try, I don't know, try <laughs> to write better and deeper uh, when I can. I'm sure, it, I mean, it's definitely influenced me directly too, but maybe not on this album as much, but. Miles Davis. Yeah, Miles Davis. Uh, my favorite Miles Davis stuff is like the In a Silent Way era uh, where he's just starting to get into electric instruments. And there's just kind of like this dark, beautiful, not dark in a sad way, just dark, like, I don't know, this, I can't really describe it, it's just dark and beautiful, uh, kind of relaxed uh, music. And the, I think the best stuff is the, from this, if you go check out the album that's the In a Silent Way Complete Sessions, that just has more uh, of what I'm talking about, what, what I really love. Um, there's just a lot of stuff that never got released on the actual In a Silent Way album. I think some of the other tracks got released in surrounding albums like Fida de Kilimanjaro and, and Bitches Brew and stuff like that. Maybe, maybe not Bitches Brew. But um, that era, like, like 1969, 1970, 1968 maybe, uh, Miles Davis stuff, I, I, I think that's my favorite. Plus then I also like the era with Gil Evans doing the arrangements mm -hmm. because he's my favorite arranger. Gil okay. Evans. So like um, Quiet Nights and Miles Ahead are my two favorites. I also like um, Birth of the Cool. Those are, those are probably my favorite. That's favorites. terrific. Yeah it's, yeah, it's still fresh every time I hear it. There's still like this crunch crust to that. It's not too refined, but it's just like, it's so beautiful how it's how it sounds. I mean, there's, uh, there's nothing incorrect or anything like that. It just has this edge and this crunch to it that I just think is like, I don't know what that is. I can't speculate as to what was going on. Was he experimenting? I don't know. Sometimes that's how you kind of fall upon that type of edge feeling as if it's like an experimental area uh, in your in your career or something like that I don't know it just kind of feels like I'm just <laughs> these are probably uh, these are very unfounded thoughts but I just wonder it just kind of has this feeling of like crunch to it that's I think is so beautiful it's kind of imperfection almost but it's not really I wouldn't you know say it's imperfection and what about modern, a bit like Mes Meshuga? I can't I never pronounced the name of the band, right? Yeah. They, 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 I'm sorry, it was Meshuga. Me Meshuga? Yeah. Meshuga? Yeah. Is that it? Like if you put an accent over the U. Like yeah. Meshuga. It's a weird thing know. because it's also um, a Yiddish word for, and it's also yeah. the other word. So it's like, uh -huh. I'm yeah, always <laughs> perplexed and confused. Yeah, I don't know how to pronounce it. That's just how I've heard other people say it. Do you have a favorite record by them? 
No, I, I I just like everything. I just like you know actually my favorite Mashuga stuff is going on YouTube and listening to their concerts from like late '90s, like 1996 or 1998, where the the audio quality is insanely bad, but <laughs> just the way that um, they play is just so beautiful. How they're they're one of the most grooving bands of all time. I think they're up there at the very top of the pyramid for me. Uh, the way that they play together and the way the writing is for the grooves, it's just. Uh, I don't know. It's, it's really beautiful to me. Thank you again for being on Records in My Life. The show's about you and the records that continue to inspire you. I wanted to ask about, I did see Thundercat, and I know yeah, you work very closely and collaborated together on, on, a, on a lot a lot of stuff. The song, I love Lewis Cole. I mean, it's. Uh, do you have a favorite piece of music or one that you're most proud of that you collaborated with Thundercat oh. on? Uh, yes, I like the song I Love Lewis Cole. Uh, I think that turned out really nice. I mean, the, it's kind of funny to say that because what the lyrics about, but it's actually, I just think the song is really nice and the way he sings and the melodies he wrote. Uh, I'm proud of the, the instruments, the instrumentals and, and stuff that I wrote for that. Uh, and uh, I also like Tunnels in the Air. That was one on my album called Time from 2018. Uh, basically, I was over at his house and he said, you can just take these songs and do whatever you want. So I just took his melody part took out everything else and then just made a new song under his basically his lead vocal line and that was it was just it was I thought it turned out kind of nice with the chords and everything that's amazing that's a great great story thank you for sharing with us that's terrific brain feeder your label is an amazing you you referenced like Sam Gendel and Fishman and um, can you give us like a, a record that one of your you know associates uh, you know, collaborated on or one of their records. Yeah, I mean, I'd like to give a huge shout out. It's also on Brain Feeder, but to Genevieve Artati's new album, which I think is really beautiful. And uh, we recorded like two years ago, or a year and a half ago. Uh, I, th I just think it turned out really nice. It just came out. I think it's called Forever Forever. And what's a good romantic record? Not overly, um, it's, I ask this question once in a while for my nephew. He's, uh, he's going through a bit of a rough patch. He's 24. So what, okay. what's a nice... Romantic. Record to put on and listen to, yeah, at home. You know what I always listen to is I. This is the music that I listen to always and will always listen to. I, I've kept. It's the music that I come back to the most through my life. I'm noticing now at 36, is um, I'll go on YouTube actually because these aren't um, released, but these old Boards of Canada songs, like random 35 track tape, a few old tunes, Volume One, Volume Two. Uh, and then there's a couple straggler tracks that they just never released. I don't know, it's just like this older era of Boards of Canada, like um, I think early 90s mostly. Uh, it's just, I don't know what the hell it is, but there's there's some really specific nerve that exists in my brain that only this music vibrates. And so I, that's what I go back to for any situation. <laughs> No, no, it's okay. so much for being, totally. What's a record? And I asked this earlier, but I'm asking because we've been talking about some great music. But in the studio, like a, a record that uh, not in the studio, but like a record that you still listen to, it can be, you know, 40 years old or or new, um, and you've listened to like copious amounts of times, but still blows your mind from a technical or musical point of view. I listen to that album, Josh Red, uh, that Josh Redman album, Elastic, a lot with Brian Blade and Samuel Hill. For that's for like a jazz. If you're th talking about like technical skills and just really nice playing, really nice writing, I love that album. I think it's amazing. It's also during kind of my formative years as a musician, so maybe it kind of still imprinted on me in a way. But that's kind of stayed with me. There's this album by um, this guy uh, Will Weisenfeld who goes by Geotic. Uh, there's this album called Hearth which I listen to, it's more like ambient, but it's like, I just think it's really fitting for a lot of situations and really deeply beautiful. Um, definitely the Boards of Canada, the stuff, that's the stuff I listen to the most, I would say. And then, um, I mean, I still go back and listen to all the, the, you know, a lot of the jazz stuff that I like sometimes. Uh, you know, like Tony Williams' Lifetime, I really love Tony Williams' Lifetime, especially Emergency and Turn It Over and Ego, those three albums. Uh, I think there's just, that the playing and the 
the um, experimenting and the sounds. It's just very beautiful to me. And also very not beautiful, but in a beautiful way, you know what I mean? It's like really uh, kind of edgy and kind of insane sounding, but it's to me it's amazing. Um, James Brown is always like almost anything is good. Even his later, some of his later stuff, is, he never really lost it. it was just all, it's all to me like super high quality. The part writing, the way the parts fit into each other, the way they're played is just like magic. It's very special and it's, I don't even know how to describe why it's so good, but everyone I think kind of feels it. When a James Brown song comes on, it's just like there's magic there and it's, you know, I think it's kind of just agreed upon. It's, I think, I don't know, I, no one needs me to explain why, but it just, it is there. I got to, I got to compliment you. Your mind is, you're sharp as all these record titles. It's, it's hard to, uh, to do and you're referencing <laughs> yeah. an amazing Thanks. amount of records and, and really good ones. And it, it's really impressive. We're just, thank you again. We're going on to the speed round another minute sure. and we'll let you go and yeah, enjoy course. Boise. Um, weed, water or wine to listen to or write. Water for probably all of that for me. People think I'm on drugs all the time because I write. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I, sometimes I'll go check out the YouTube comments on my videos, and there's a pretty good percentage of comments that say, like, this guy's on drugs. Um, which, uh, yeah, it's, I, I'm very. Sometimes I'll have marijuana, and I'll it'll really blast me to outer space, but I really try to do that only maybe every few years or so. And I don't really have that much alcohol that often because it just kind of slows me down. Um, but they're both, I mean, they're both amazing in the right situation and they can enhance music. For me, never really writing too much. Maybe sometimes with alcohol, it's kind of just gets my mind loose a little bit and it's kind of maybe can help, but I never really rely on that or have even a specific memory of that being like a helpful tool for me. I usually just try to... I don't know, I think me being bored... Uh, in life kind of maybe helps me a lot because it kind of pushes me to try to push uh, to pull uh, you know twinkles out of the air around me that's I'm kind of bored of and a lot of music bores me too it's um, I, I will be the first to say that I'm a huge snob with music and I've learned I've, at first I was like I'm, I suck you know I, I'm just such a piece of crap for being such a snob but it's like I actually think it really has helped me and I've learned to embrace it over the last couple of years so this is a huge tangent, but it's just where my mind's going right now. That's but amazing. but I think it's really helped me actually to know exactly what I like. And it's maybe kind of helped shape my filter for listening to this music that I love and maybe kind of filtering it into a, hopefully a different thing. Yeah. So it I would makes, say water. It, yeah. It makes 100% sense though, right? I mean, good music to listen to. The show's not about me. Sorry. I'm you know, I like on, hearing but, this actually. But it's like good music. Life is too short and... and you're massively passionate, obviously, about music, and it's one of the greatest joys in life. It's like you can't waste your time unless you're unconscious listening to to pap. I mean, uh, yeah. Anyway, I, I agreed with you 100. percent Oh, okay, cool. Um, coffee with an artist, alive or dead? Maybe like some old Clapman Mozart or something like that. Yeah, that makes sense. <laughs> yeah, I, I saw the movie too. It seems like I don't know if that's really what he's like, but he seems like a fun guy. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> I don't know if that's really what he was like, but. Uh, yeah, I think it'd be fun to have coffee with Mozart. Record of your high school years. First record that comes to mind. Of my high school years, probably Tony Williams' Lifetime Emergency. That kind of blew my head off. Yeah. Thank, thanks. Last question. Thanks for being, again, if this is great. I'm, I'm yeah. enjoying it like more than anything. <laughs> well, I mean, you can ask me a couple Thank more you. It's fine, if you want. Words, words, words of wisdom <laughs> for your fans and our audience. Life is <laughs> not always fun. Try to, I don't know, <laughs> try to make it. <laughs> That's good. Let me let me ask actually one more question. Like I'll ask yeah. you like a Miles because a Miles Davis question. Like if you could be a fly on the wall for one of his studio recordings, and I mean there's so many. His catalog is yeah. vast. Like which record would you enjoy being made the most? Probably in a silent way, those sessions or the Jack Johnson sessions are cool. Not to be confused with the <laughs> the Hawaiian day. the Hawaiian yeah. guy. Or yeah. not, he's not Hawaiian, but he, the you know surfer. What I mean? yeah. the, the, the surfer guy, right? <laughs> yeah, the surfer guy. <laughs> yeah. The, uh, yeah, not, it has nothing to do with him. It's the boxer. He, Miles Davis was writing music or having other people write music and put his name on it that had something to do with the boxer. Uh, but I don't know. That session has some really weird, cool stuff, and I just love all the musicians like Jack DeJohnette and Dave Holland and all this. But probably in a silent way. The in a silent way, the, the, the one song that I really love the most, I think, from that session is the old version of In a Silent Way 
uh, by Joe Zominal. The one it, it's called Rehearsal. It's like in a silent way parentheses Rehearsal. The one they release is like a drone, and then they play the melody. It's nice. I like it. But the original one is beautiful. It's got all these chords, and the harmony is just it's so deeply beautiful to me. Uh, I really love that song. And uh, I, one time I bagged Joe Zominal's groceries. He's the guy who wrote that song. Oh yeah. wow! Yeah, I was working what at Ralph's. Thrill. Yeah, I was working at Ralph's Market, and he came in, and then I followed him to the parking lot. I was like, I'm a huge <laughs> fan. I look like a fucking idiot. You know, I was like an 18 year old guy at Lewis. You know, Ralph's, and he was like surprised, but he was it was really cool memory for me. Did you say hi to him, or you just? Yeah, no, I went out to the parking lot. I was like, I'm a huge fan of you. And That's he's like, great. What is going on? Nobody at Ralph's knows what he's doing. You know, it's like it's, <laughs> it's just it was a cool moment for me. That's terrific. That's yeah. a great, what an experience. Yeah. Also, can I just give a shout out to um, one person who really changed my life and the way I write is Skrillex. Um, just the way he uses sounds and sound effects mixed in with music and actual, you know, tones that we would think of as more traditional music, the way it's mixed together. And um, I know there's a lot of great dubstep artists, you know, from that era that where it exploded, but... He really stands out to me as just like making these really memorable, deeply. I know I'm using the word beautiful a lot, but it is beautiful the way it's put laid out and put together these these, um, these sounds and uh, grooves. The way he makes uh, beats are they're super grooving and uh, I don't know, just like even melodic and uh, like his early stuff, especially like Scary Monsters and Nice Brights. And there's a few like tracks like Needed Change and um, Puppy. And uh, this much power, the original version. I, I gotta shout those out because those are those have been huge for me. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you. My name is Lewis Cole. Thank you.